Good morning and welcome to Wake Up With Marcy. It's time to be inspired, empowered, and learn to live our happiest lives. We do this through stories of hope, celebrity inspiration, education, and resources. Today we learn why we are experiencing dry eyes and what dry eye disease is and the help available. How one man's terminal diagnosis has made him the face of Duchenne, a rare form of muscular dystrophy, and how he is helping others. And we learn about a life quiz that can help you during the holiday. We first meet actor and comedian Ken Jeong from the movie The Hangover and the show The Masked Singer. He tells us his story of dry eyes and we hear why this is happening and what can help from Dr. Ashley Brissett. Next, we meet Elijah Stacy, author of A Small If and founder of Destroy Duchenne. Elijah was born 20 years ago with a rare form of muscular dystrophy called Duchenne. At the age of 16, to avoid agonizing surgery, he chose to endure enough physical therapy to change the shape of his own spine. It had never been done before, yet his doctor gave him a small if. Lastly, we meet Wake Up's official intuitive business strategist, Kim Woods. We hear her upcoming forecasts, which are incredible, and we learn how to use our intuition as we head into the holidays and how a life quiz will support us in doing just that. Now let's meet our guest. We all know our next guest for playing some of the funniest characters on television and film, but comedian and actor Ken Jung does have a serious side when it comes to his health. He's joining us live this morning on behalf of Novartis alongside ophthalmologist, Dr. Ashley Brissett to share his journey with dry eye disease and why it's not a laughing matter, which of course is not a laughing matter when we're talking about our eyes. But I wanna welcome both you, Ken, and Dr. Brissett to the show. Thank you. Thank you. So first of all, Ken, I wanted to talk to you for a little bit about something people may not know. And that's when you were going to school and you got the acting bug. You, you started in theater and um, you realized you had a real passion for that. So how did you manage doing both? Yeah, um, yeah, I got I got incredibly lucky, and I think that for me, my whole journey has just been, uh, I, I think, one of a, a of a long blessing that I, I that I enjoy to this day. And for me, like I've I've worn contact lens for like thirty five years, although I'm a millennial. You know, that's what I tell people. <laughs> but when I when I was when I was a medical professional, I would do overnight hospital shifts and. You know, that would seem to exacerbate symptoms of dry eye, just feeling red, like something's in them. And once I became an actor full time, you know, my whole life is now being on dusty sound stages, living here in L.A. and reading off teleprompter. And that seemed to contribute to uh, symptoms of dry eye disease. And that's when I contacted my doctor. Yeah. And so. Dr. Brissett, so many of us are doing exactly that. We're on Zoom all of the time. And, you know, even us right now. So have you seen an uptick in your patients with this? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic changed so many aspects of our lives. And definitely the increased screen time is one thing that I've seen a lot. And so many more patients coming in with signs and symptoms of dry eye disease because our whole world is on a screen nowadays. We're on a screen when we're at work and then we're on our cell phones and our tablets and watching television when we're at home. And the reason why screen time can contribute to dry eye disease is that we blink less when we're staring at a screen, which can dry out the eyes. So um, usually what I recommend for my patients is to start using what's called the 20-20-20 rule. So every 20 minutes, take a 20 second break and look 20 feet away. And that helps to relax the eyes. It gives them a break from the screen and also helps to redistribute the tears on the surface of the eye, which can help with eye dryness. Okay, so let's talk about dry eyeness though, exactly what it is and what the symptoms are. Well, for me, it was like, I was feeling dry, red, irritated, like something was in them. and. 
that's why I partnered up with Novartis to uh, encourage people to get annual eye exams and also to see if they have symptoms of dry disease. And once I saw my ophthalmologist, I was diagnosed with uh, inf having inflammation. And so I was prescribed Zydra, a prescription eye drop that alleviated my symptoms. Yeah, and exactly as Ken said, inflammation can be an underlying cause of dry eye disease, which is why it's so important to treat that root cause to really kind of treat the signs and the symptoms, which is what Zydra is indicated for. It can treat signs and symptoms of dry eye disease. So so important to see your doctor to see if a prescription medication might be right for you if you're experiencing symptoms. Then it's not for everybody. There may be some side effects, um, which could include some burning or stinging on the surface of the eyes when you put in the drop, and sometimes a funny taste sensation because the tears actually drain into the back of your throat. So sometimes you can taste the medication. Um, and then you just wanna be careful not to be using this medication if you're allergic to any of the ingredients. So I encourage anybody, if you think you're having signs of or any symptoms of dry eye disease to see your doctor. Right, and is there anything specific, like I, I know you talked about the symptoms and you know, let's talk about also what is triggering it, but it, are there exact questions or information that they should share with the doctor to make sure that they get the, the right diagnosis? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question because dry eye disease is what we call multifactorial, meaning that there's many reasons why the eyes can be dry. And it's often the combination of all of these that leads to somebody's symptoms. So as Ken mentioned, you know, his environment was, was one factor. And so dry, dry, dusty conditions, even as we are getting into the winter months coming up, the cold air can make eyes feel worse. And then certain medications can make your eyes dry. So antidepressants or medications for high blood pressure can contribute. And then even hormonal changes. So around the time of menopause or changes with your cycle can also lead to increase in dry eye disease. So great. So I can't see, and I look forward to dry eye disease. <laughs> <I'm> joking. <Yes. laughs> I tell you, I, I could have every one of those. <laughs> But anyway, so I'm so glad there's something out there to help and, I, and you guys are sharing some great information. So Ken, let's talk about what's been going on with you. You have so many great things happening. Oh yeah, um, I'm Mass Singer right now every Wednesday and um, just finished up a, a Netflix series with Mike Myers and Keegan-Michael Key. And uh, that was one of my favorite projects ever because Mike is... Uh, huge comedy hero of mine. And when your heroes are just better than you imagine, you know, when you work with them and meet them, it's just uh, one of the most special projects I've ever done. And, and, um, and I can see your voice, the show I'm hosting also on Fox is coming back mid season. So yeah, awesome. so it's uh, very, very, very excited. So how is it working on the panel? Oh, it's great. I mean, you know, I'm the smartest judge on the show, as you know, and I'm just, you know, everyone's intimidated by my brilliance and the fact that, you know, I, I doubled down, tripled down that the flower was Bjork, you know, and, uh, but I yeah. started off this season, right? Because I guessed uh, that the octopus was Dwight Howard and I was right. And now I'm rubbing it in everybody's faces and annoying the public. I think it's fascinating that these stars are in these costumes and how they're getting around and moving so well in them and that you guys <laughs> clues and figuring it out. I mean, it's really, really a fun show. Yeah, so, it really is just like game night for the whole country, you know? It's just yeah. like game night and you're just having fun, having a laugh and, you know, and I'm, you know, I think that shows on the screen that all of us are having fun at the same time and that's what it's all about. It's a nice, it's a nice escape from reality and just, uh, just having a good time right now, yeah. It's what we need, that is for sure. So let's uh, let's hear how we can find out more information. Oh yeah, for more information, go to zydra.com. Zydra.com. Well, guys, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing such valuable information. And Ken, just keep it up. Keep us laughing out there. Great. We need you. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you. All right, Bye. guys. Bye-bye. Next up, we meet Elijah Stacy, author of A Small If. He has an incredible story. You are not going to want to miss this one.
Hello, Elijah. Welcome to Wake Up with Marcy. Hi, it's great to be here. Well, it's wonderful to have you on, and I'm so grateful you are going to share your story with us. Um, you have a rare disease called Duchenne. Now, can you explain to us exactly what that is? Yeah, so I'm born with this disease called Duchenne muscular dystrophy, and what it is is it's a fatal muscle wasting disease that eats away a person's muscles as time goes on. So when I was a little kid, I was able to walk, but I walked on my tippy toes and I play on the playground and I wasn't able to keep up with my friends, wasn't able to go upstairs too easily. I'd fall to the floor frequently and all things like that. And then when I was 11 years old, I lost my ability to walk. I got you know too weak to bear any weight. So I was completely dependent on a power wheelchair. And then later in uh, my teenage years, I lost mobility in my arms, uh, which is you know a huge setback. And then the worst part about this disease is, as I said, it's fatal. Most patients pass away um, by the time they're 25. So it's mm -hmm. a very serious disease, but I believe that we're going to cure this disease and I believe that we're going to do something about it. I know you have a fight and we're going to talk about that uh, with your charity. So tell us what, what were the signs that something was wrong? Yeah, some of the major signs that something was wrong was I was not able to put my heels down. You know, my mom went to measure my height against the wall to try and get me out of a booster seat. And I couldn't put my heels down. You know, I was walking mm -hmm. on my tippy toes. And so yeah. that was one of the first major um, signs that there was something wrong. But, you know, not able to keep up with my peers, just falling to the floor frequently, getting um, off the floor was a challenge, not going upstairs. You know, that's what was really noticeable. So I know you were not able to walk like you just shared. How did that make you feel? And how did it make your your family feel? I mean, you're talking about your mom. How, how, was your, how were your parents impacted? Yeah, when I was 11 years old, that's when I officially lost my ability to walk. And I was determined to never not lose my ability to walk. You know, I wanted to know I'm going to overcome it. I'm never going to use the wheelchair. You know, I remember when we had the wheelchair delivered to our house and I'd look at it every day and walk past it and say, I'm never going to use that thing. But, you know, eventually you just got too weak to where I had to use the wheelchair. And, you know, the way we took it is real positively, honestly, you know, it's like, let's just focus on what I can do. Let's focus on the good things about life. Let's not worry about you know, not being able to walk, you know, I had to develop what I call an adapter's mindset and adapt to everything I do, like putting on my clothes to brushing my teeth to getting out of my bed and climbing into my wheelchair to using the bathroom and everything like that, you know, even going in the car, right, we had to um, change our car so that we can, I can get in and out of it easily. So things like that um, needed to happen, but, but we did it and we're resilient and we're just going to keep moving forward no matter what is thrown at us. You're incredible, Elijah. An incredible mindset. So let's talk about your book, A Small If. And who this who is this book for? Yeah, so A Small If is my memoir, and it has 13 life lessons in it that I think are going to really help people overcome their adversity or the adversity that they're going to face in their life, because I believe that um, suffering is inevitable. And this book, really, when I was writing it, you know, the person I had in mind, the people I had in mind is, you know, the girl that has low self-esteem issues that wants to you know, better herself or become more confident. You know, the guy that's getting made fun of or feels like an, an outcast that feels like he's different than everybody else. It's for, it's for them. It's for the person that's suffering that wants to become mentally stronger and tougher and more resilient. You know, it's for these people because I'm that person. I was that person, right? And I had to develop those things yeah. and, and overcome those. So that's who the book's for. And I really think that it can just impact so many different types of people from all different types of life. I, I love it, Elijah. So let's talk about some of those life lessons. Can you share a few with us? Sure. The life lesson that I'd love to point to is um, the economy of control. This lesson says that you should focus on what you can control and disregard what you cannot control. But the key to this lesson is that a majority of things are not in your control. Sure, you may be able to influence it, but influencing it is different than being able to control it. For example, let's say that I really want someone to like me so I could be nice to them, take an interest in them, be polite. But at the end of the day, that's just influencing them because at the end of the day, they may not like anybody and I can't control that. So they may not like me either. And so I don't worry about it. Um, but that's one of the major uh, life lessons that I would point to. Another life lesson that I think is super, super important is called the self image. You know, how do you see yourself, right? Because how you see yourself is gonna um, relate to how you act and how you act is how other people are going to see you. And so that's a super, super big lesson to ask yourself how you see yourself. And then if you want to see yourself a different way, work on, uh, work on seeing yourself in that way that you desire. You are truly inspirational, Elijah. So 
it's just incredible what you're sharing. And I think we all can use some inspiration. So tell us how, how it was for you writing this book. It was honestly really nice. Um, sure, there are moments where it gets hard and challenging, but it was really nice to just put all my life and all my thoughts into a, a collection, right? To kind of go through all those memories again and to really get all the details out. You know, I'd call some people to interview them that were in my life and ask them, hey, you know, what was I like when I was a kid? And can you help me, um, you know, uh, rediscover these stories that I went through? And so it was really, really nice to, to go through that whole process again and relive those moments and to finally have the book all done. You know, I just feel like this book is going to really impact people. And that was the most fulfilling thing ever to, to know that this book is not just a book, but a, a tool that people can use to, to better their lives and to overcome their suffering. And, and so I was yeah. just really happy when it was all said and done. And you met with Jeff Bezos. Why was that so important to you? Yeah. So I met with Jeff Bezos and Jeff Bezos is someone that I really look up to in the business world. I think he's an amazing entrepreneur, a brilliant mind. And so I wanted to meet him and I was fortunate enough to have the opportunity to sit down with him and ask him questions about Amazon and ask him questions about uh, Blue Origin and all the things that he's doing. And uh, just having that discussion, sharing a moment in time with someone that I look up to was just incredible. And so I'm incredibly yeah. lucky um, to meet him. And, you know, he was just such a nice guy, such a brilliant guy. Um, mm -hmm. And it's just such a fruitful conversation. Amazing. So, so let's talk about your charity now, uh, Destroy Duchenne. Tell us about that, how you started that, and where are you at with that? Yeah, so when I was 15 years old, I founded a nonprofit organization called Destroy Duchenne, and Destroy Duchenne aims at uh, completing the cure for the disease I suffer from, Duchenne muscular dystrophy, and we want to do that by advancing gene editing and gene therapy and get it into human practice. So we're constantly trying to raise awareness of this disease that um, not a lot of people know about, but I'm hoping to change that. I'm hoping to, to make this disease a mainstream known disease that people care about. And I believe when people start to care about this disease, money's going to come pouring in and we're going to be able to use that to help usher in the golden age of medicine. Yeah, absolutely, Elijah. And, and your brothers had the same disease, right? That's correct. So my little brother, Max, um, he had the same disease. He unfortunately passed away when he was 14. He's had other health mm. complications as well, but he passed away from the shin muscular dystrophy. And just seeing the pain that I caused his parents, right, makes me so determined to cure this disease because I don't want other parents to have to go through what my parents went through. And then yeah. my little brother, Kai, he, he also has the same disease. He's in eighth grade now. He's in a wheelchair and um, he's, he's 14 years old and he has the same disease as well. And he's just a, a fun guy to be around someone that loves to do art and just have a good time. Well, Elijah, you are a remarkable man, and I so appreciate you coming on Wake Up and sharing your story and how you are making a difference from what you have been dealt. And we could all learn a lot from how you are dealing with this and your mindset. So thank you for coming on and thank you for helping others out there with your book, A Small If. So thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's really been great being able to talk to you today. Thank you so much. All right. Bye-bye. Good Bye. luck with everything. Next up, we meet intuitive business strategist, Kim Woods. She shares with us about a life quiz and helps us get through the holidays. Hello, Kim. Welcome to Wake Up with Marcy. Again, I just am so excited to have you on as the official intuitive business strategist. You've given such incredible information and our forecast. And now we get to talk about this incredible Know Your Life quiz. So welcome back. Thanks. It's great to be here. I love being here and telling all your viewers all the things. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to talk about our intuition heading into the holidays and what we need. And we learn this through this, uh, the quiz that you offer. Is that correct? Absolutely. The quiz offers you a way to look at yourself through a lens that gives you insight into how you read energy, because mm -hmm. that may sound a little woo, but the holiday dinners, the holiday times are filled with 
power plays, agendas, you know, you have the, the uncomfortable silences, you might have those little backhanded snipes, you know, mm -hmm. you might have those uncomfortable conversations with people where you just don't feel like yourself, you feel yeah. drained, whether they're boasting or whether they're filterless or what have you. And so this quiz gives you all the things you need to get prepared, to get into the right mindset and to set healthy boundaries. I love it. So tell us more about the quiz. So the Where, quiz, I mean, what do we do? Yeah. So basically what you do is you answer a handful of questions and it's about you. It's about what you what's important to you about your priorities, about how you handle different scenarios in your life. It's about your superpowers and it's about, you know, tips for developing your intuition because their energy is everywhere. And, and there's a vibe to that. Intuition is the ability to read the vibe. You want to know to read the vibe. Again, because you've got that boastful cousin, maybe, or you've got the, you know, for you, you get the um, people flock to you and they never mm -hmm. ask you how you are. Well, the yes. quiz gives you ways to deal with that. You know, it is interesting, Kim, and I'd love for the viewers out there to think about this. When they're in a room, each person that walks into that room shifts the energy of that room. Absolutely. And just to, to maybe just notice that. Because if right. you, you give yourself that time or that space to notice it, you're like, oh yeah, Aunt Betty's in the room now. Right, <laughs> you better, right. You know. and, the, and the quiz gives you what may be your, and I call it the kryptonite, what may be your triggers? What may be the things that, like for you, people come up to you and they just ask you a question. I mean, excuse me, they just tell you things, tell you things, never asking you how you are. Mm -hmm. For me, it's the uncomfortable silences. I tend to fill them. And so I lose myself because it's draining. I'm filling them and I'm filling them. So for anybody who's dreading the holidays, upcoming holidays, looking for ways to avoid them, maybe feeling like, okay, I'm going to do this, but I'm just going to like kind of buckle in and I know they're draining. Yeah. This quiz will give you ways for them not to be draining and give you ways and tips for, for how you can manage them for you in particular. Imagine having tools to help you get through this. Absolutely. You're, right. So you're not drained or getting yourself into maybe an argument or something uncomfortable and you walk away and you're very unhappy with the situation. Absolutely. So, yes. Yeah, so I took the quiz and it was what it's like 12 questions. It yep. was very, yeah. So it's like very quick and it was so interesting how spot on it was about me at the end uh the outcome and um so i think everyone would get a real kick out of this to see what they are you know who they are their superpowers and how their intuition intuition and and i don't know like you're saying how, how we can best manage our holidays with our intuition and the tools you're teaching Absolutely, because people are different. And so what might trigger you? Like, I don't mind the boastful cousin, but that might be something that would be really hard for somebody to deal with in the audience, right? So if you take the quiz, you'll know that. You'll know what your kryptonite is. You'll know how to get prepared. You'll know how to be in the right frame of mind and you'll know how to set healthy boundaries. So you can actually enjoy the holiday season and not come away completely drained. So Kim, tell us where we can find the quiz and also, if someone out there, maybe they take the quiz and they want to work with you or talk with you more, how can they do that? Absolutely. So the quiz URL is knowyourlifequiz.com. We have a QR code that you can scan and that I know we're going to show here. And then you can find me on Kim Woods channel on Insta and Facebook or kimwoods.com on a website. We've got a free group that we you know, help you do, deal with all your power plays and all of your intuition um, types and tips. And we have this quiz and this quiz is complimentary, but it's a wealth of knowledge and can really help you this holiday season. It's incredible, Kim. Thank you so much again for giving us such insight and the ability to help ourselves and these tools because we need our tools. So thank you again, Kim. And as always, just loved having you on the show. Thanks so much, Marcy. All right. Bye-bye, Kim. Bye-bye. Thank you all so much for joining today. What an incredible story from Elijah and great, great inspiration from Kim using our intuition. How about that? So 
you want more information on my guests, please head over to wakeupwithmarcy.com and I hope you will sign up for my email list. Also, follow me on Instagram for updates on the show at officialwakeupwithmarcy.com and at host Marcy Hopkins. I share a lot about my personal journey and recovery and lots of inspiration. I want to share a quote with you. Hope is the only thing stronger than fear. And that's by Suzanne Collins from The Hunger Games. It's so very true. There's so much hope out there. Remember to be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and I'll see you next Saturday. Have a wonderful week. Bye.